you. We have arrived at the third Sunday of Lent, Sunday the 20th of March, uh, and we're thinking about uh, a bit of Luke chapter 13, where Jesus says, really, really, you need to stop and have a good think about what you're up to. Uh, before we go on with that, let's get on with the news. Um, COVID, do you know, it's looking good. It's looking really good. Um, we're going to stay with masks until we get into April. Come April then, uh, we're going to sort of take off masks in church and use the altar rail again. We've already started a new rotor where we're in two churches each Sunday. Uh, we're going to stay with that and we're hoping we're going to have a normal Easter weekend. So we're going to bring you an agape supper. We're going to bring you three different services and three churches on Good Friday, a full messy church service on Easter Saturday, and that is a sign that we are really, you know, uh, motoring. Then on Easter Day, uh, a service in each of the uh, churches as we go through the day, uh, a full programme. That is what we're hoping. Uh, we're hoping that two years now since COVID came and clobbered us that um, we're pretty much, you know, kicking it out the door and uh, we're going to have a really good Easter. Um, ministry areas this Wednesday. So if you're listening to this on Thursday, you've missed it. Uh, this Wednesday, the bishop is coming to town to inaugurate officially uh, with pomp and ceremony and hymn singing and sandwiches, uh, the Pediravan ministry area. Um, the team, the ministry area um, team, uh, has got representatives all over. So have a chat with them if you want to. Uh, and if you want to become part of the team that continues to build this ministry area, then let us know. Let us know. Uh, there's information on the website which you know about. Uh, so you can dip in and see what the other people are doing uh, and hopefully what we would all be sort of gather together to do as well. Uh, thirdly, um, and again, um, this is ongoing, um, but you might think, ah. Oh, Hang on, I've missed. Uh, the Lent course is what I'm talking about. Uh, we've had one or two sessions, but if you have missed those, you can still come to the other ones. They're, they're all independent of each other. So Glenda's running the Lent course, generally on Wednesday afternoon, stroke evening. Um, we're watching a film and then I've been sort of like little snippets of it each week and uh, asking questions. It's all based on Stephen Hawking's life and it is really interesting, really interesting. Uh, watching somebody else's life and then asking questions about yourself and about god um yeah you can still dip into that even if um you know you've missed up until now uh, and as ever you know um we're going to keep doing these little pieces to camera for the foreseeable so we're in church we've got little bits on camera but if you can't access any of that um we can send to you the message every week let judy know and she will make sure um most people are back in church, but not everybody. And if that's you and you're still a bit nervous, it's okay. It's okay. We're not going to leave you on your own. Yeah, now Get in contact and uh, we will share our thoughts with you. You can always ring us up, do a bit of Zoom, uh, emails. You know, we can come and talk to you through your window. Just let me and Reverend Glenda know. Back to today, as I said, a little bit of Luke. Um, so this is... Uh, Luke chapter 13, uh, verses 1 through to 9. Have a listen and give you my thoughts. About that time, some people came up and told him about the Galileans Pilate had killed while they were at worship, mixing their blood with the blood of the sacrifices on the altar. Jesus responded, Do you think those murdered Galileans were worse sinners than all other Galileans? Not at all. Unless you turn to God, you too will die. And those 18 in Jerusalem the other day, the ones crushed and killed when the Tower of Siloam collapsed and fell on them, do you think they were worse citizens than all other Jerusalemites? Not at all. Unless you turn to God, you too will die. Then he told them a story. A man had an apple tree planted in his front yard. He came to it expecting to find apples, but there weren't any. He said to his gardener, what's going on here? For three years now I've come to this tree expecting apples and not one apple have I found. Chop it down. Why waste good ground with it any longer? The gardener said, Let's give it another year. I'll dig around it and fertilise and maybe it will produce next year. 
If it doesn't, then chop it down. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay. Thought on that. Uh, let's come back. Uh, let's go back. You come back with me. Let's go back in time. Uh, I'd been working as a student in Bosch, uh, the company called the Bosch, for a week. And it seemed that in the department at lunchtime, everybody got out their packed lunch and sat around and had a little chat. Uh, I never talked, I just listened. After another week or two of my being there, lunchtime came around and the conversation started. Today, they were talking about religion. It was the random topic. topic. Uh, I listened as the team talked around the subject as to how people got religious, how far it took people, wars, yada, yada, yada. And as all this is going on, I feel something bubbling up inside me, like I should say something. Um, so I look up to heaven and say to the big G, have you organised this for me to sort of show that I'm a Christian? Or do I keep my mouth shut? Anyway, open my mouth. And I simply said, don't any of you believe in God then? Don't any of you believe in God? It all went very quiet. Uh, and some tumbleweed blew through the office. Um, you could see people just looking at me and then they turned back to their desks and uh, the conversation uh, simply stopped. Uh, they'd suddenly realised what I was. Uh, religion was never talked about again, but I knew I was being watched like a hawk. Uh, a few months later, I happened to comment to Tony uh, about the new young girl that had begun working in the accounts department saying how pretty she was. Now, Tony was a character, right? In his late thirties, a ladies' man, you could say, he was on wife number three then. Um, and he just says what he thinks. So after I, uh, this single, I have to point out that, single, 21-year-old male, uh, had made this comment about a nice young girl, Tony says to me, you're just like the rest of us, aren't you? You're just like the rest of us. I didn't quite know what to make of the comment, but obviously... As they knew I was a Christian, a whole heap of expectations and rules had been put on my head, and I was now suddenly breaking them. What I should have said, but I was too slow, was, yes, the only difference between me and you, Tony, really, is I've been forgiven by God. Um, as it worked out, you know, Bosch offered me a job, uh, kept it open until I'd finished my studies. It became a seven-year career, which I was really enjoying, um, until ordination came to fetch me. Rarely did I talk about my faith, um, but it was noticed. And it actually marked me out in a positive way, you know, somebody worthwhile. So what? What's that story got to do with anything? Well, Jesus in the Gospel today is talking to a bunch of people like Tony, uh, a bunch of people who have very set views about things, and actually they're a bit off base, uh, and Jesus needs to correct them, right? Uh, so this is all in the Jewish context. Uh, some Jewish people have been murdered by Pontius Pilate. Uh, a tower has fallen on some people in Siloam. And uh, some Tonys yeah, then start musing that me, these people must have had it come in. It's God's judgment. You know, they, they had all these rules in their head about how God uh, works. And Jesus says, no. Uh, sometimes bad things happen to good people. And good things happen to bad people. Um, don't look around at others and make judgments. Accept God's forgiveness for yourself. Um, or worse than uh, being murdered by Pontius Pilate or having a tower on your head. You know, you're going to end up in the warm place at the end of life. You're going to be in hell. To temper this, which is really quite a strong message, um, Jesus then talks about a tree. Now, uh, in his day, you can't expect fruit on a tree for three years. So the fact the man had been looking for three years suggests we've got a six-year-old tree here, uh, and it seems good for nothing, uh, ready to get it cut down and throw it in the fire. But the gardener, okay, uh, an analogy, you know there, yeah, a God analogy says, let me have one last try, and suggests a few things to try in its seventh year. Again, a nice biblical number of completeness and giving it every opportunity. Uh, Jesus is speaking to his own, I think, um, through you know what he says and then in this kind of little parable. And what he's saying is, look, 
unless you realise in time uh, who I am and become Christians and uh, repent and uh, become baptised, then you are choosing your own eternal future. God will not make you choose heaven all through time. And still continuing today, I think, uh, people have a good whinge sometimes about all the bad in the world and that if there's a God, then he's not doing a very good job, etc. But God, on the other hand, is playing his hand differently. Uh, well, people are bad-mouthing him over there. He is over here uh, trying to get people's attention, answering their secret prayers, giving people God nudges and dreams. He's like the gardener in year seven, trying to get people to accept the golden ticket that's got their name on it, that Jesus earned for them on the cross when he died for them. Now, the last time I saw the real Tony, uh, it was after dark in Cardiff many years ago when I bumped into him outside a pub. Uh, I don't think he'd become a Christian, but he was pushing his disabled friend around in a wheelchair. So, womanising aside, his heart couldn't have been all that bad. Mine is not to judge, though. Um, that's God's job at the end of time when the books are open and the full picture's on the table. Maybe I'll see Tony upstairs, maybe not. I don't know. These two things for us to remember as we sort of uh, absorb all of that uh, gospel reading and uh, the thought that goes with it. Two things. Here's the first. Jesus has done everything uh, for your sins and my sins to be totally forgiven by God, no matter what we've done. Uh, Jesus' last words on the cross were, it is finished. It is finished. And he was thinking about you and me at the time. Everything has been done for our forgiveness. And secondly then, God is the gardener uh, who will do everything in his power to get your attention, but always leaves the decision to you. You know, tree should have been cut down. No, we'll give it one more chance, one more chance. Um, but always leaves the decision making you know, to the human being while they're getting all those chances. Think. Choose well. Uh, believe. Okay, think, choose well, believe. That's what Easter's all about. Question time for as ever. See what you make of these through the study, if you want to call them that. Number one, have you ever been noticed as a Christian in the workplace? Have you, in a workplace or maybe a sort of volunteer organization or something, been noticed? as being the Christian, and uh, I've heard any positive or negative comments because of it, yeah? Ever been noticed? Uh, number two, do you see what Jesus is saying about sometimes sad things happen? You know, people see bad things happen, God doesn't care, they deserved it, still get that. But Jesus says, you know, sometimes this stuff happens and we just kind of roll with it. Number three, uh, do you like the idea of God as a gardener who's willing to wait till you're seven? Do you like the idea of God giving every opportunity, every opportunity, going above and beyond? Uh, do you like that idea? And number four, have you responded totally to the gardener? I don't know what your level of faith is or why you're looking in today, but have you responded to this gardener who's just waiting to see some fruit, uh, is waiting to see signs of life uh, within you? There we are. Um, song. Song. Uh, there's going to be ups and downs in this life. Um, but there is real hope to be found because of what Jesus has done for us on the cross. Uh, so let's sing the song. Hope has a name. Hope has a name. His name is Jesus. Let's pray ourselves out. Uh, then we'll have the music at the end. And together close your eyes. Let's say a prayer. Dear God, thank you that Jesus came to change people's lives. Thank you that if we say sorry for what we have done and we ask Jesus to take the driving seat in our lives, real change can happen. Amen. Amen. Right, everybody, I will see you wherever. Like I said, there's a full programme of things, hopefully opening up between us. Uh, but if you um, if you need us just for a chat beforehand, uh, just uh, give us a call. We will be ready to see you either in person 
online or sort of electronic, right, whatever would be. Christ my King I bow my life I fix my eyes on Christ my King 